want to own Abbas Hussein here for seconds out here with the dynamic duo. Al Smith, Eddie, Lam, how are you guys doing? Yeah, good, thank you. Brilliant. Yeah, fine, thanks. Fight week. You've done many of these fight weeks, Al. Um, this one, you've got three of your boys on. How, how's, how's the general sort of feeling in camp? How's the general feeling with the, with the lads that you've got here? Yeah, it's been really good. Obviously, that Henry Turner's took it on short notice, the same as uh, Cuban and Jago. So uh, they've all been knowing that this may come round. They were scheduled to box in December, uh, the 20th of November and the 5th of December. So we pulled it early. One, it helped out uh, Frank. And secondly, that you know, something can happen between them. So, yeah, we're really pleased to have three on. And, uh, you know, it's a good, good night for everyone. Eddie, just your thoughts on that? On the lads that are in at the moment? Yeah, they're, they're always... Uh fit and ready anyway they're ultimate pros so um, yeah um, they've just they've always been in the gym and just waiting around for a day let's talk about them individually then let's talk about Henry Turner um, talk, let me talk about his potential because we know he's had a great amateur record he's, he's come through the amateur scene and people have heard of him through that if they know the boxing but you, you two guys see him day in day out just talk about his potential what, what sort of levels can he reach yeah, I think he could go all the way. I think he's easy, you know, up to British, European and, and move on from there. He's a really clever southpaw. He's got a very pleasing style. He's just uh, just going to probably grow into that more man strength. You know, he's a, no stoppages at the moment, but technically he's incredible. Uh, you know, he was, six, I think, seven times national champion, you, you know, European gold medalist. And, uh, you know, he comes from the Repton Club as well, which is so well scored, just like a couple of the others. So I think he's got ball potential. He's a really nice boy to train as well. You know, he's now jumped in twice on a week's notice, you know, and that just shows you the commitment for a 19-year-old boy that, you know, mentally he did the very first show we'd been on. So he didn't know what to expect. So I think, that, you know, you've got to give maturity-wise for a 19-year-old boy. He's like ahead of the rest of them that way. Um, I just want to ask then, not a lot of fighters in this period have, have got to fight. There's a lot of fighters who are still waiting. If you look, at, look through world boxing, uh, there's still some big fighters who haven't fought at the moment. Henry's actually, luckily, I know it's only been a week notice at some times, but he's got to fight in the last year. He's fought three times. It's going to be the fourth time he fights. How grateful are you in that sense that, you know, he is sort of, he's fighting. You may not get the notice that you want as a trainer uh, combination, but he is still fighting. Yeah, definitely. I mean, look, with, with all my fighters with Frank and a couple with MTK and that's why we're there because one we get looked after secondly you have that relationship with with uh, with the two teams that we work with and uh, you know he looks after them the managers you know Francis and, and Andy and, and between Frank it's the best relationship for us you know we've got that that bomb of them you know and we're able to supply people on the short notice and they get looked after they're getting the right fights at the right time we're blessed with that you know and obviously law it goes a long way both sides Eddie, I just want to quickly just touch on uh, Mickey Beck, another one of the fighters, the gent. Um, we know what he's done in the past. Uh, obviously, he's, he's had a couple of fights now, all gone uh, with points decisions. Just for the fight fans who are not aware of him, you know, what, what do you expect? What sort of fighter is he if people haven't seen him fight so far? Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a boxer, a fighter, a box fighter. He, he likes a little bit of a tear up. But with, um, Al likes to get him uh, boxing more, working um, everything, yeah, everything off his boxing. But he's a little bit of aggressive, likes a little bit of a tear up. But um, he could be um, the dark horse out of all these because he's been in the gym uh, from day one since he was 15 years old. You know, he's learning off uh, Bradley Skeet and Johnny Garton. And um, he's a little bit old school. He's got some nice old school moves to him. So um, we see him. I mean, uh, in, it, he don't get he don't get shown much on TV and that, but um, what are you <laughs> yeah, but he could be the dark horse. Yeah, uh, Mickey, whilst you're here, we're just talking about you. You've got good ears there, mate, and they must be burning. But um, yeah, we're fighting today. How are you feeling? How's, how's things? You know, a lot of people don't get to talk to the fighters on fight day, but what's going in your head at the moment? Uh, I'm just ready to fight now in fourteen to the twenty third of December, wasn't it? Yeah, last yeah. year, so it's been a it's been a long time. Uh just can't wait to get out of him perform. Al, what does that do for a fighter then? I'm gonna ask you anyway, but he's been out of the ring for a long time. 
Uh, what, what does that do in regards to you training him? Do you train him differently? Uh, but leading up to the fight, what, what's gone on with that? Because not, it's not always the case that a fight is out for 11 or 12 months. Yeah, I disagree with ring rust and things like that. If you're a, if you're a professional, you know, and you're, uh, you, you do everything in the gym, which he has done. You know, he's, he start, he's been with me since he's 15, so he's always been in the pro gym since he's 15. Which is probably about a year ago. Now he's so young, but uh, you know he knows what's coming. He won't have any ring rust tomorrow. He's got a tough, very durable, very experienced guy that he will have to go overcome. That you know, Sugar Leonard box, you know, Hagler with so many years off and did an ultimate performance. And I disagree with that. He's done everything in the gym. If he has, you know, makes some mistakes, he's in the right fight at the right time to make them. So I, I don't, I expect to see the very best Mickey Burt tonight. I'll get to good opponent. Mickey, for the, well, I was just chatting to Eddie just then, just asking your sort of fighting style, and he's saying, you know, you're, you're a bit of an aggressor, you, you like to come forward. Um, in, these, in these times that we're living in, you know, people like entertainment in boxing now. It, it seems that because everything's on the TV, uh, people like people getting knocked out. Um, are you looking to sort of put on a performance tonight, you know, maybe get that knockout? Yeah, I'm, obviously I'm always looking to uh, put on a performance, but... Um... Just, I'm just going to stick to my boxing and not get carried away where I'm on, on t- TV. Stick to my boxing and do what Al and Eddie says. And if knockout comes, knockout comes. But Al wants me to stay, uh, don't, don't come forward as much. Wants to box a little bit more. How important is Al? You know, just sort of taming the lion, just making sure that he doesn't go 100 percent and try swinging, and you know, sort of telling him about the basics of boxing at the same time. Yeah, you know, he's a well-schooled amateur. He come from the rep and he won four national titles. So he, he, he knows the basics. You know, his dad's a, a professional trainer. So he, he's got that in his blood a little bit. So he'll know that. And if he makes a mistake tonight, you know, he'll be able to address that in between the rounds rather than just relying on myself already. So I've got full confidence in him. You know, he does get carried away. He's got a, a very tough opponent tonight in Tommy Broadbent, who I like a lot. A bit of a crazy kid as well. But, you know, you've got to box everyone and every type of fighter to get through here. I'd rather it be six rounds tonight, because I think he's mature enough at 19 or 20, whatever he is. So, uh, yeah, he'll do really well. He'll have to solve the puzzle himself tonight. Mickey, good luck for tonight. Um, Henry, can I just quickly grab you in and just take to that position? Well, that... Tonight, you're useless, no. <laughs> um, we were talking about Henry before. Yeah. He's here. He, these guys have just gone to do their medical today. People don't know why they've sort of just strolled in and out of the interview. But Henry, we were talking about yourself. Uh, for the fight fans that haven't seen you, sort of give them a little introduction of what you've done in the amateurs. We know, I know what you've done in the amateurs, but they might not do. So just give them a little bit of an intro. I won uh, seven national titles. I won a European title in, as, in, as a junior. I won uh, five, mul- five international titles. I had 60 fights as an amateur, winning 50, 56 of them, so I only lost four. So I had a very good amateur career. And I was chatting to both these guys, and I was saying a lot of fighters haven't sort of had the opportunity to fight in this year. You've fought three times since you turned pro, which is late 2019. Yeah. I know Al was saying that you got you know, one week's notice for a couple of them fights, but uh, how grateful are you that you're, you, you know, you're still out, you're still fighting whilst a lot of people are sat at home? I'm very grateful, like, to, to even have the opportunity to box again this year. Like, it's uncertain. We got we're in very uncertain times, and to get the box twice this year, I, I boxed in February, which was good, but just before lockdown. But to box twice while we've been in lockdown, it's been it's been a very good opportunity for me. You've done the whole lockdown fighting. You've done it behind closed doors. You've done all of that, uh, but. All eyes on you once again. You're going to be on the telly. You know, you, yeah. people are going to be watching you. Is there any added pressure? In regards to that, no, I don't think so. Like I've done this now. I've come here in July. I've done it. Like so, I've experienced it now. So this time, I'm a lot more relaxed and I'm ready to go. So I put on a very good performance. Al, tell me. You 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 told me, but whilst he's next to you, how far can this kid go? Oh, all the way. You know, obviously step by step. You know, British, European, and move on. He has an incredible style. You know, he's very gifted. He's been. Uh, uh, John Fury noted that and said, you know, he's got a real good eye and he speaks very well. And he noted that. We've been over sparring Adam Booth, Jim, and Adam, you know, complimentary about him. And, uh, you know, everyone that's been around him, he's got a really good personality, a nice boy to train. I think he goes away. He just needs to step by step, you know. Uh, Frank manages him direct as well, which shows the interest that Frank's got in him. Shows that, you know, he has a lot of faith in him. He's not being rushed. Uh, He's stepped up to six rounds tonight as well on a day's notice. He's give away five and a half pound in weight and still not a moan from him. So maturity is a big thing in life and physically he needs to mature a little bit more. But mentally, he's very, very mature. 
Henry, good luck today. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. Okay, but let me just pull you. I know, I know I've talked to you in the last day or two, but just jump in, mate, whilst you're there. Um, Al, talk to me about this guy. You know, th there's been a lot of talk about him. He's already sort of been on a BT Sport card already on the Lyndon Arthur card. But you see him day to day. Talk to me about him. What, what sort of potential has this guy got? He's got all the potential in the world. He's got a funny accent, so it makes it a little bit hard to understand. I don't know where he comes from. But yeah, look, he was a world-class amateur. WSB, 150 fights, multinational titles, you know what I mean? So he had a hard fight last time, but the right fight at the right time. Francis manages him, and obviously, you know, Frank promotes him, and we've given him the right fights. This is a good test for him tonight, because the kid's very, very tough. Very, very tough. I like the kid a lot. Uh, but he has so, so talented, you know? And also, again... He was told he was going to be on. Then he wasn't on. He had to come back a day later, and he's took this on two weeks' notice. You know, he's had to make weight uh, above his championship weight. So another, you know, he's the old one of the older ones in the gym. At 22, you can be old, I suppose. And, uh, you know, just shows the maturity again. You know, and he's leading the way for the younger ones. You know, and, and he's gone from a six-round to an eight-round to a ten-rounder. Yeah. So... Kevin, just going off that then and going off what happened with Henry, he's had a you know, week's notice for a couple of fights as well. Is it important for the fighter to stay in shape to make sure that if an opportunity does come like this, especially in the period that we're in, that they're in shape? So are you generally in shape you know, near your weight? Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's very important for a professional athlete to stay in shape all year round, regardless of... Um, COVID or not, um, yes, you're gonna, you may get a last minute call, but as a professional athlete, you should be in shape all year round. Um, thankfully, I was back home, I was letting my hands rest after my last fight, and Al had rung me and said, Listen, mate, start getting in shape, I need you back over in three weeks' time, we're gonna be out in December. So, thankfully, I had them three weeks training, three, four weeks training, um, and then whenever I got the last minute call, it was only two weeks of hard camp. Uh, so, I was, in, I was in decent enough shape to come over. Um, and and start training and and if Al or Ed didn't think I was ready to take a fight in two weeks, they wouldn't have took the fight. You know what I mean? It's a it's a team effort, so um, they they believe in me and believe that uh, I can I can step in in two weeks' notice and get the job done. Eddie, just a, a quick one for you then in regards to Kevin. Um, we know that his story is at the start of the year he was called out to sort of be part of the Billy Joe Saunders camp and stuff like that how much of a compliment is it to him and his style and the way he fights yeah um, I took him up there we went up to Manchester he sparred with Billy Joe and sparred very well um, and, I, and you don't get a, a fighter as explosive as um, Kevin so um, yeah and he's got a very good uh, boxing IQ so um yeah, he's very good, very good. What's going to happen tonight then, fellas? Kevin's in the middle, obviously, you, your guy's going to win, but how do you envisage this victory? I just, you know what, this kid's very, very tough. You know, he, uh, he only got, I think he's only been stopped, I think, by Brad Pauls, who's a good kid. So uh, I just think we're just going there to win. He can, he's now gone nine rounds before. I think uh, his opponent's only ever done seven, so, you know, it could be a bit tricky. Uh, he's very tough, he's very thingy, but he now knows how to go through the gears. Both have had like, the biggest time to prepare, but both uh, <clears throat> both are true professionals. So, you know, just a win, that's all that matters. Kevin, okay, what have we got to expect from you tonight? Um, like I said the other day, Pond's perfect uh, performance. Um, if I have him hurt, I'm going to get him out of there. Uh, the good thing about having Al and Ed in the corner is that they, they make sure we don't get overexcited in there. Um, they make sure we're doing everything right, we're winning the rounds, and then they will tell us when it's time to step on the on the gas and, and try and get them out of there. Um, so and I, I believe I'll go in there, box my best ability, and when it's time to step on the gas and pile the pressure on and, and hurt them and try and get them out of there, Ed and I'll, I'll let me know and I'll, I'll do that. Kevin, thank you for your time. I'm just going to carry on with these two, if that's all right. Um, guys, um, on the Saturday... Uh, one of our Brits flies, well, he's flown out to America already, but he's going to be fighting pound for, potentially pound for pound, number one in Terence Crawford. Kelbrook has gone there. Um, what do you make of that fight? How do you see that fight playing out? I think mean, Kelbrook's an incredible athlete. He's been a great ambassador for the sport. Uh, and I wish him the very, very best of luck. I generally do. He has a puncher chance. But I think Terence Crawford is, a, is an incredible specimen of a boxer, and I just think it's a little bit step. A little bit too hard, in, in, in my opinion. But it's nothing think of it, impossible, but I really think Crawford's a very, very special thing. But I wish Kel the very, very best of luck. Yeah, the, the same. Kel looks like 
he's seen better, he's seen his better days, yeah. and um, Crawford's like uh, pound for pound best in the world. And um, uh, like I said, he's only you're only one punch away from winning. So you know, I wish uh, Kelbert all the best, but I for me, uh, Crawford. <laughs>